गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज हरचरण सिंह पी जी टी इंग्लिश कैम्ब्रिज इंटरनेशनल स्कूल द सुआ एंड आई होप यू ऑल आर फिट फाइन एंड हेल्दी एट योर होम्स एंड स्टडिंग वेल स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो देर आर टू प्रेस्क्राइब टेक्सट बुक्स बाय द सी बी एस ई वन इज हॉर्नबिल एंड सेकेंड वन इज स्नैपशॉट्स both have been published by ncert so we were reading hornbill and uh, today we are going to start the second book that is snapshots uh, students we are uh, reading the summer of the beautiful white horse that is the first chapter from snapshots and uh, yesterday we had started it and today before we start the next I am going to recap what we read yesterday. Uh, this chapter, the summer of the beautiful white horse, has been written by Will William Sarwan, and uh, this chapter is about two Armenian boys. One is Aram, and uh, his cousin Morad. They both belong to Garoglenian tribe, and uh, their tribe is. very famous for uh, its trust and honesty they are poor but still they are very honest and uh, trustworthy uh, both the boys aram and morad they both are very fond of horse riding but being poor they cannot afford it one day it was uh, very early in the morning aram was sleeping and uh, his cousin morad he came to him aram was sleeping and he was in the world of extremely beautiful imagination he was in a very pleasant sleep and his cousin morad came to his house tapped on the window and called him he jumped out of his bed and he could not believe what he saw out of the window he rubbed his eyes because what he saw he could not believe that but there was enough light outside and he could understand that he was not dreaming what he saw that was reality what he saw that morad was sitting on a beautiful white horse aram rubbed his eyes and brought his hat out of the window and morad told him that he was not dreaming there was really a beautiful white horse he asked him if he wanted to ride then he must do it fast morad was very crazy boy he is considered to be very crazy by the whole family and he lives in his own style aram had always a dream to ride a horse and this was really like a dream comes true for him and he was very much ready and very much excited to ride the horse then aram tells about his family that they belong to a very poor family <clears throat> their family is garoglenian and uh, they have been living in poverty for the last 11 centuries but still they are very honest and trustworthy and uh, they are very proud they are honest they are always they always believe in right and wrong no person no member of their family could ever steal anything they never tell a lie they never take advantage of any person and they never cheat anyone so he also tells i mean he does not understand how his family manages to get food for themselves every day aram on seeing the horse was so excited that he was seeing a horse that was so pleasant and so beautiful he said he could smell he could smell the horse and he could hear it breathing but still could not believe that uh, his cousin morad was sitting on the horse the reason is that he knows that they are poor 
they cannot afford a horse if they cannot afford a horse then murad must have stolen it but that is also not possible because he belongs to garugalenian family and no member of their family uh, can be a thief he started looking at his cousin and then at the horse there was a religious motionlessness and wittiness in both murad and the horse as one charmed him and the other scared him he was very excited about horse riding but he was afraid lest murad should have stolen it aram was still confused where did the horse come from then he asked his cousin murad whether he had stolen the horse his cousin murad told him to come out of the window if he wanted to ride i mean he was not ready to tell murad did not want to tell aram anything about the horse that aram thought one thing was clear that the horse was stolen murad must have stolen it there, there was no question about it and now he has come to invite aram also to join horse riding then aram he is confused because he belongs to garugalenian family how can they ride a stolen horse but on the other hand there is his excitement of horse riding so he convinced himself that if they have stolen a horse only for riding then that is not like uh, uh, stealing money gold or anything else because according to him what they will do is they will ride the horse and they will leave it back at its place it was not like stealing money or stealing anything yes there is one more thing if they steal the horse and then they sell it then it would be really an act of stealing but they have stolen it only for riding so that is not like stealing money or anything else so in this way he convinced himself then he requested his cousin morad uh, to let him wear some clothes and uh, morad told him to do it fast and uh, aram he came out after wearing clothes and uh, then he jumped down to the yard from the window and uh, leaped up onto the horse behind his cousin morad and they both went for horse riding when they start riding and uh, aram starts telling us about their house and their place where they live aram tells that uh, they lived at the edge of the town that was called walnut avenue that was the place where they lived at that time and he said that uh, behind the house there was the countryside and there were vineyards orchards irrigation ditches and country roads vineyards means like uh, grapes wine and other wines orchard means students there is difference between orchard and garden orchard is the garden of fruits just like apple orchard mango orchard irrigation ditches and country roads and then he said in less than 3 minutes they were on olive avenue that is another place and then the horse began to trot it started running properly on the road aram told that the air was very fresh and lovely to breathe in the feel of the horse running was wonderful they were enjoying it then he told that his cousin morad as he has already told he is considered to be very crazy and not only crazy the craziest member of the family and he started singing means he started shouting very loudly then aram tells that every family has one person that is very crazy he said that is in every family and he said in their family morad was a crazy person 
Then he told that before Morad, one of his uncle, his name is Khosrow, that is also considered to be very crazy person. He tells about uncle Khosrow that he was a very big man with good physique and uh, he had a powerful head of black hair and the largest mustache in the Saint Jacquin Valley and he was a man. His he was so temperamental, he loses his temper very soon, very furious and he is so irritable, so impatient that whatever you tell him, whatever you inform him, he does not take notice of anything and he stops anyone from talking by shouting. What does he say? It's no harm, pay no attention to it. That is the character of his uncle Khosro, that he was very energetic and uh, temperamental, very impatient, does not listen to, does not listen to anyone. To describe more about his uncle Khosro's personality and uh, about his nature, Aram here tells us one story that is very small tale about his uncle Khosro. He said what happened, uh, once his uncle Khosro, he was sitting at the barber shop and he was getting his moustache trimmed. Uncle Khosro's son Eric, he went running eight blocks to the barber shop where uncle Khosro was sitting. And his son told him that their house was on fire. Uncle Khosrov sat up in the chair and started shouting very loudly. What he said, his pet dialogue, there is no harm. It's no harm, pay no attention to it. <clears throat> the barber said, but the boy says your house is on fire. The barber told him, Sir, your house is on fire and your son has come to call you. Again, Uncle Khosrow started shouting at the barber, Enough, it's no harm, I say. He did not listen to anyone. Then Aram tells that his cousin Morad, he was very similar to Uncle Khosrow. He said Morad's father... His name was Zorab. He was a very practical person. And, uh, but Murad's nature was like his uncle Khosrow. Then he tells us that a man could be the father of his son's flesh. But that did not mean that he was also the father of his spirit. It may, I mean, you may resemble, a son may resemble like his father but that does not mean his nature and his behavior his habits will also be like his father so then he tells the distribution of various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the beginning uh, capricious and vagrant their tribe that keeps roaming from one place to another place then he came back to the riding he and his cousin Murad, they both are riding and Murad is singing. And uh, then he tells, for all anybody knew, we were still in the old country, where at least, according to some of our neighbors, we belonged. We let the horse run as long as it felt like running. They enjoyed their horse riding. Okay, students, I'm just going to recap what we read today. We are reading The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse. This is the story of two boys, Aram and Morad. They both are Armenian boys and they belong to Garuglanian tribe. They both are very fond of horse riding, but they cannot afford it because they are very poor. Their tribe is very poor. Their family is very poor. But uh, the trait of their family is that they are very trustworthy and honest. They never cheat anyone, they never steal, they never tell lie. 
but they both are very fond of horse riding one morning at 4 am when aram was sleeping his cousin morad came to him and tapped on the window called him out for horse riding in the beginning aram could not believe his eyes when he saw a very beautiful white horse on which his cousin morad was sitting he could not believe first he thought he was dreaming but there was enough light outside he understood he was not dreaming he asked his cousin morad where he brought that horse from he was not ready to tell him aram is thinking horses horse is very beautiful and very pleasant it's very marvelous but the thing that he could not believe what his cousin was doing on the horse because no member of the garuglenian family can afford a horse and if he has not bought it he must have stolen it he is confused then he asked his cousin morad if he had stolen the horse morad replied whether he wanted to ride or not if he wanted to ride the horse he should come out aram was convinced that the horse was stolen but he was very excited about horse riding also then he convinced himself uh, by suggesting that if a horse has been stolen only for riding that is not stealing if we that is that is not stealing like uh, stealing money stealing gold or anything it was just like for fun if yeah if they steal it and then they sell it that would be a crime but if they have stolen the horse only for riding that is not uh, stealing and uh, in this way he convinced himself and requested his cousin morad to let him wear clothes and then he would come then after wearing clothes he came out and they both started riding the horse they both reached uh, at the edge of the town on walnut avenue there were orchards vineyards irrigation ditches and country roads behind his house they were on olive avenue within 3 minutes and the horse started to trot started running the air was very fresh and lovely to breathe and aram he started singing loudly not singing he started shouting loudly and murad told that aram was considered to be the craziest member of their family then he told that before murad one of their uncle khosro his name is khosro he is also considered to be very crazy person he was a very big man with black hair and uh, the largest mustache in the valley he was very temperamental his very short tempered and very impatient and very irritating whatever a person is talking uncle khosro would stop him talking and he would start roaring himself saying that is his pet dialogue he always says it's no harm pay no attention to it then aram tells one day uncle khosro was sitting at the barber shop getting his mustache trimmed his son came running to him and told him he came to the barber shop and told that their house was on fire uncle khosro repeated the same dialogue there is no harm pay no attention to it barber was amazed and he told uncle khosro that your son has come to call you your house is on fire but the uncle khosro roared at the barber also and told him to pay no attention to that murad was considered to be a natural descendant of his uncle khosro he was just like uncle khosro aram's so murad's father is zorab he was a very practical person but he his nature is not like his father his nature is like uncle khosro aram tells this is not necessary uh, that all the habits all the likes dislikes and behavior would be like parents there can be physical resemblance 
but nature can be different the same goes of murad and uh, then he tells that their tribe that is their type of vagabond people they keep roaming from one place to another place and then he came to the riding there they were still riding and murad was still singing loudly they were still in the countryside where according to their neighbors they belong to thank you